what's up guys welcome back to the channel here we are with another reaction to one of our favorite people said guru makes a foreign anchor speechless before we can dive into this guys if you enjoy this video make sure you hit the subscribe button you ring that notification bell and get a video a thumbs up see what we got said guru please welcome sub guru Welcome to the show, Sadhguru. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I wonder about the, 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 the <clears throat> title guru. Is that, is that a protected title or could anyone become a guru? <laughs> uh, Sadhguru is uh, not a title, it's a description. Mm. That is, uh, if you want to have your eyes checked up, you don't go to your gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see, yes. <laughs> You know where to go. Sounds, yeah. So when you say a Sadhguru, it essentially means an uneducated guru. That means mm. uh, if you want to know scriptures, you don't go to him. If you want to know religion, you don't go to him. If you want to read your future, you don't go to him. There's only one thing he knows. He knows this piece of life from its origin to its ultimate, absolutely. He knows nothing else. <laughs> How important mm. is, to, is it to have a beard? <laughs> no, that was… that was you not know. decided by me. All men grow beard, some men removed, Except only me. one removed <laughs> here. <laughs> we should ask him why he removed, does he have a good reason? <laughs> Is that… <laughs> Isaac, Dad, we do grow beards, I'm trying… I can't get this full beard going. I need to get me some beard oil so I can… I can get it going but uh… We all do grow beards. He was right about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're teaming up here, huh? I see. I regret the question. You know? um, it doesn't make him a guru. That's his choice. Um, I should I should I should, should start our conversation by talking about your father because he pa he passed away. So my condolences. What kind of inspiration was he for you? He was definitely a symbol of extreme sense of integrity. Mm. I don't know if it's because of him, but I think becoming a seeker of truth, integrity becomes of utmost significance in your life. So at a very early age, I tried to enhance my vision, enhance my hearing, trying to see and hear things which others do not hear normally and see. Mm. Essentially, what I realized was <clears throat> ignorance is a consequence that has come because most human beings ignore everything around them. Ooh. It's a consequence of that. So I okay. paid attention and paid attention. So, so uh, here now. I feel like I feel like most of my life, I've, I feel like I've been ignorant to to the point of where I just like ignore a lot of things, ignored a lot of things, and never really questioned anything. And I feel like as I got older, like now, like I, I'm very curious about so many things, and I tend to question almost everything. And so, like if you tell me something, I'll, I'll question you about it because it's not trying to prove you wrong or anything, but I truly just like genuinely want to know. And so I question so many things uh, about either like why I have certain beliefs or I question <laughs> why why I think a certain way. I just, and I question, so, and I question like politics and, hey, hey, is the president the most powerful man or is there people behind the president that actually make all the decisions? I just legit, I, I'm saying I just question so much stuff in life. So I understand him, he's saying like, I was just very aware of like everything around me. I paid attention and most people don't pay attention to everything around them. And I'm most people for most of my life because I just, I just didn't pay attention. What, what are you paying attention to? What can you, what, what can you sense that I can? Uh, <laughs> so this is, people are always thinking paying attention means something magical should be happening. But the most magical things are happening right now. Mm. We are sitting on a tiny mud ball called Earth. 
it's spinning in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere knows where this creation begins, where it ends. Here we are sitting and talking like this. Isn't this a magical thing? And I'm paying attention. <laughs> Even though I'm a microscopic speck in this universe, still I have an individual experience. I can see yes. this as me and see this as her, see this as somebody else. This speck should be nothing actually, but this speck of a thing has individual experience, a sense of individuality, which mm. is such a tremendous thing. I love that. I think most people don't appreciate that, they always suffer that. And uh, loneliness has become one of the biggest problems in the world because they do not appreciate their individual nature. Mm. So would you, would you say that we are too easily bored in our own company? If you're uh, bored when you're alone, obviously you're in bad company <laughs> 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 the, the, f the fact that we are, uh, as a species, are aware and perhaps more aware than the animals of our time as limited. We, we know that we're, we're going we're gonna to get old, we know that we're going to die someday. Really? Most people think other people die. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not ourselves. <laughs> yes, most people think other people die. They don't understand for every one of us, time is ticking away right now as we sit here. Facts. What is, tick what is ticking away is not the clock. What is ticking away is our life as we sit here. If we know this, we would have no time for doing any nonsense with ourselves. We would do what means absolutely most to us, mm. not silly things. There's one thing everybody must do before they go to bed. For a few minutes, if they see their bed as their deathbed, just see that next one minute you're going to die. In this last twenty-four hours, have you lived this twenty-four hours the way you want it if this is the last moment? Every day if they do it, they will come to their senses, you know. Some, yeah. some people find... I think, I think, and going along with what he's saying, I think a lot of us, we do take time for granted. We do believe there's going to be a tomorrow. Like, I, I go to sleep and I'm like, no, there's going to be a tomorrow. Like, and in my head, you can't convince me I'm not going to die of old age and that I'm not going to live to my 80s. I, I got I got to my 80s. I'm like, I'm living to my 80s. Uh, but, yeah, I guess in that, you do take time for granted. Uh, you said in these 24 hours, right, if you were to go to bed, and you passed away tonight, did you live the past 24 hours the way you wanted to? And I think a lot of us would, and me, even yesterday, I, I think I would say no, like, because I feel like there's so much that I want to be able to do and there's so much that I want to accomplish, yet I haven't. And I don't think I spent the last 24 hours trying to accomplish it, if that makes sense in a way. But um, I also love what he said about uh, individuality. You, you have to be comfortable being alone. You have to be comfortable with your individuality and who you are. And it is magic because there is only one you. you there is only one you. So take pride uh, in your individuality. The fact that there's nobody out there that's the exact same as you. You're different from every other person on this earth. You may be a little speck on this mud ball that we call earth, but you have your own experience down here you're experiencing life the way only you can experience it and so that is magical when you put it like that but i'm, I'm gonna continue to let him go my bad comfort in religion how, mm. how about you one must look at this that the real thing is that you don't know where you came from and you don't know where you go you can believe what you want i love if it. there was no belief in the world if there was no religion in the world, a whole lot of people probably would not know how to manage themselves. Mm. I would say it's a very inexpensive psychiatry. It's not a solution, but for that oh. moment it settles them, which I feel is important. It does a certain part of the job. But those who are seeking to know life, to know the very nature of their existence, then belief is of no use because belief means mm. you're assuming something that you do not know. Mm -hmm. Seeking truth means you're unwilling to assume anything that you do not know.
Mm. What are you thinking? I, I was just thinking. You say that to believe it's it's not a solution, but what's the solution? If, if that is, do you understand what I mean? You're telling us that if you believe in something, that's not the solution. What's See, the solution? So you know what? that in different parts of the world, people believe different things. Mm -hmm. Yes. In one part of the world, what they believe looks ridiculous to people in another part of the world. So Facts. belief is a consequence of social influence. Facts. It has no existential significance. Mm. Only what you perceive genuinely, that's all you know. Rest is all your imagination. But h how do you actually sharpen your observations or your perception? This mechanism, the human mechanism, is the most sophisticated mechanism on the planet. Everything mm. that ever happened to you, pain and pleasure, joy and misery, agony and ecstasy, even light and darkness is only happening within you. Physical pain is a natural phenomenon. Mental pain is something that you do to yourself. Ooh. Because the way you think and the way you feel is entirely your choice. But what about… So what about warning? I love that. Physical pain is a natural phenomenon, right? That happens to everybody. But mental pain is entirely yourself. The way you think, the way you feel. That's all up to you. So he said mental pain, like you're putting yourself through that. And I love the fact that he brought up religion because people around the world do believe in different things. And I mean, if I'm being 100% honest, more times than not, where you grow up, the people around you, uh, I mean, what the belief is in that area, more times than not, not saying every time, more times than not, that's what you're going to grow up believing. And what other people believe in different areas, 100%. Other, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you go across the world, they'll think that's that's weird, and vice versa. And so I 100% love that he pointed that out, man. I really like Siguru. I really, really like Siguru. Feel is entirely your choice. Mm. What about so what about you warning? Turn your feelings off, mental. If you're why hurting, should you turn it off? I would say that you choose to feel sad, or um, but you don't choose it. I mean, if if yes, is there a magic no. turn off? Someone like my son died. I have uh, it's not my decision. So I'm uh, I I don't know how to uh, to move around that pain and not you are in a some way i just now i heard both of you saying it was translated yeah. to me you were saying that uh, when you think of him you're more joyful thinking of all the wonderful things and that's how it should be because a life that came into your life and exited for whatever reasons you respect that a life comes and goes it's not our making you cherish that life for what it's been for you see the only reason why you value it is it in some way it's been beautiful all right should you cherish it or should you grieve it? But well, still... this is not a philosophy, let me come to that. But right now, whether there is joy or pain or misery or ecstasy or blissfulness, all are emotions, isn't it? Happiness is an emotion, misery is an emotion, joy is an emotion, suffering is an emotion, agony, ecstasy, everything is different levels of emotion, pleasantness or unpleasantness. Now I am asking you a simple question. Please listen to this carefully. If you had a choice between being pleasant or unpleasant within yourself, what is your choice? I take pleasant. <coughs> That's it. So, <laughs> this guy is straight. Hmm? You're all thinking because you're thinking there is something to it. No, it's as straight as this. It said that everything that doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Uh, isn't that also the truth? So, he's basically, there's a choice. Do you want to feel pleasant or do you want to feel unpleasant? And I agree with this in a sense where, like I, I talk, I've talked about this with my wife, uh, but there's there's times that, that like tragedy strikes and there's moments that happen where it would make you feel sad and make you feel down. It'll make you feel down. And I just hate, I, I told her, I hate the feeling of being sad. I hate the feeling of being down. I hate the feeling of people feeling sorry for me. I, and so in those moments, like, I choose to continue to c keep my brain busy, keep my brain thinking about other things, and I try to push the sadness and 
this might not be good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I see shows and like therapists and they're like, you need to feel all those emotions. You need to allow yourself to feel it. Well, I don't like to allow myself to feel it. I like to like, and it may backfire one day, pushing it all down. Uh, but I just, I'm a positive person who likes to be happy. And so whenever any moments I'm feeling down or any situations that could put me down, any tragedies or anything that have happened in my life, because I have suffered through tragedies and I have had sad moments. I'm human, just like anyone else. But more times than not, I just tend to like push it down to to the point where I ch- I don't want to feel it. I don't want to think about it. I want to keep going. I want to I want to push past it and uh, I want to be happy. All right. I want to be positive. I want to be smiling. And so uh, this this video is really I really can understand a lot of what he's saying. Because I feel like I can really relate to a lot of the things that he's saying. So if you want to live by slogans, it's fine. Let's explore something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have it to you yourself. <laughs> but for the pleasantness of your body, for the pleasantness of your mind, emotion and energy, it is 100% your business. Mm. If you have excuses, unfortunate, there are no excuses. It's just that you're choosing to be that way. Are you always pleasant? Within myself, absolutely. The question is not about do you always pleasant, unpleasant. What happens within me? Something else cannot determine that, that's all. Sadhguru, um, <laughs> where, where do you believe your father is now, his soul is now? <laughs> do you believe in, in, in an afterlife or is, is uh, death uh, sort of a line? Is it true that uh, you slowly gathered this body over a period of time? So, this is just a piece of earth that you gathered. If so much, if you have to gather, something more fundamental must be there, isn't it? Sadhguru, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I absolutely love that video, man. I think Saguru is just, he's so literally awesome. Uh, he makes you think so much. And he's so, he's so full of wisdom that like listening to him, you're just drawn in, you're mesmerized, and you just want to listen to every single word that he's saying because you don't want to miss anything. Um, and I think a lot of the times I can relate to a lot of things Saguru is saying. And if I can't relate, I can think about it and understand why it makes sense. And so um, I think he's truly incredible. You guys let me know how you feel about a lot of the things he said. I'm very intrigued. So drop that in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed that reaction, make sure you check out this one next. Subscribe to the channel. And it's your boy, Daniel. Out.